Okay, so in the previous video, I took a good look at this motor electrically and uh, made sure that it functions real nice. Um, now what I'm going to do is, uh, it's probably not going to need any work inside at all. I'm sure the bearings are fine. There's not any slop in them or anything, so um, I don't really need to take this apart, but I'm going to take it apart and clean it up a bit, uh, just because I want to have a nice visual appearance. Uh, I want to paint everything separately and polish all the screws, uh, uh, polish the shaft and stuff, and uh, just kind of check it out, make sure it's all good. I have no doubts that it's, there's anything wrong with it, but uh, I'll just go ahead and take it apart now and uh, get it all painted up. Okay, now that I've taken the screws out, uh, these motors are pretty simple. They usually just pop apart from both sides. Um, it looks like this one even has some slots for uh, where you stick uh, a wedge or whatever. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and see if I can just pull this apart. Yeah, this is coming right off. Alright. All right, that looks real nice and clean inside here. Bearings look real nice. Fan blades are all good. Yeah, this is a nice little motor. A little dirty on the windings, but that's nothing too bad. Uh, might clean it off a little bit, but I'm not really gonna worry about it too much. I'm going to go ahead and take off this uh, part of the centripetal switch here just to break this into three nice parts for kind of easy painting. So I've got this motor all broken down now into all the different pieces I'm going to work with. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is just bring these down to my parts washer, these end, end caps here, um, get them all cleaned up, uh, run a screwdriver over these old rubber mounts and just remove those uh, since they're completely worthless. Um, then I'll be off to the sandblaster after that, sandblast these two parts. I'm still trying to think of a way to protect the bearings in here. I'm not really interested in pulling them out. Um, well, I'll find some way to mask those off uh, so I don't get any grit in there, hopefully. Um, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do about the uh, stator part here yet. Uh, I can't really remove the actual coil very easily, so um, it's covered in all this really thick chipped paint and tar or whatever. I do want to sandblast it. Um, I might mask it off somehow and sandblast it and see how well that works. Um, not quite sure yet. Uh, I'm not too concerned about it, um, but I'll kind of try some things and see where it goes. Okay, so we just spent a few minutes removing all the old rotted out rubber from these housing ends here. Um, next step is going to go to the parts washer and see if I can clean up a little bit more. So this is the inaugural run of my new parts washer. Uh, I got up to help out with this project. Um, it was kind of being a pain using a utility sink to clean stuff with uh, some of my previous projects. So uh, this should help out Quite a bit. I apologize if it's a little loud in here. I've got a uh, water heater running right next to this. I would be running this up in uh, my big workshop shed, uh, but I'm using a water-based cleaner here, so it would definitely trigger a big frozen block of ice if I did that. Uh, I live in up, up in Illinois here, so uh, it's the middle of January, so gotta run it inside the house for now. Uh, probably might move up there eventually, but uh, you know, let's see how well this works. I'm using a mixture of uh, just water and simple green. Uh, not as much simple green as I'd like, I kind of ran out, but uh, I generally like simple green, it's a good degreaser, so 
Let's see how this goes. Okay, so I've got these uh, housing ends uh, fairly cleaned up. Uh, there's still a lot of rubber on these from the, those motor mounts. Uh, unfortunately, those will have to be taken off in the sandblaster. Um, if you're wondering why I'm cleaning this up before I'm sandblasting it, it's because sandblasting this stuff is just a real pain. It takes forever. Um, and I found that uh, if there's any material like dirt or crud that's there, um, especially this rubber, um, it's really going to absorb the energy from the, the media that I'm going to use instead of taking stuff off. So I've kind of found that if I clean things off really good and get it down to paint as much as possible, I can splash the paint off real quick. Um, and it's kind of it's kind of annoying to do full full cleaning in here and then clean like a then cleaning with the sandblaster, but I think it actually is the least amount of time, and it kind of is the most efficient use of uh, working on this, so. Okay, so we've moved out to my shed workshop here with my uh, abrasive media blasting cabinet. Uh, I tend to use pretty much entirely a uh, glass bead. Uh, it's just kind of the best for my application, right? I just want to remove paint and stuff. I don't want to actually etch the surface or anything usually. Uh, it works pretty good for that. So uh, I was kind of going back and forth about how I want to protect these bearing surfaces and uh, I'm not terribly worried about it with the glass bead. So I just um, rolled up some paper towels and shoved them in there and that should, that should keep most of it out. And I'm going to do a really good cleaning on these uh, afterwards anyway, so I'll make sure to remove any little bits of glass bead that are still there afterwards. So I'm not too terribly worried about it. So uh, I'm just going to run the time lapse on this because with air compressor in the vacuum, there's no way you'd be able to hear anything I'm doing, so here we go. So I've been contemplating how I want to prepare this part for painting. Uh, it's got so much thick paint on it, and it's just real nasty. And there's some tar or something on it that uh, I do want to spray. But I do want to uh, blast it in my blasting cabinet. Um, the thing about that is that I have to be very, very, very careful not to accidentally blast any of the coils. They're just enamel-coated wire. So if I were to blast those, I would almost certainly get a short. So what I've decided to do is put the ends back on to protect uh, the coil from the abrasive blasting, uh, and that should work pretty good. I'll put I'll put a bunch of masking tape all over everything so that none of the media gets in there. Uh, I, it, that wouldn't cause a big deal. I'd be able to blow it out, but uh, I just want to keep it as, everything as clean as possible. So I'll go ahead and mask mask this up and prepare it for sandblasting.
so I've got it all bolted back together. So I've got a nice protected way to blast this last remaining part of this motor. Uh, I masked off all the holes that would get in there just to keep everything clean, as clean as possible. Uh, so now I'll go out and blast it. Okay, so bolting that together and masking that off looks like it worked pretty good. Uh, I'll go ahead and rip off all the masking tape and uh, separate this into three pieces again. Then I can prep it for priming and painting. Okay, so unfortunately there was a bit of uh, media that got into the inside here. Uh, I'm sure nothing got actually blasted or anything, so it wasn't too big of a deal. I just bl blew it out. And uh, it's nice and clean enough again, so uh, that should be fine. So now I'll just work on masking these off and uh, then uh, putting a nice little bit of acetone on them, wipe them off, uh, get all my oil from my fingers off on it. I'll put some nitrile gloves on just to make sure I don't get any more oils or grease from my hands on this uh, once I start doing the acetone. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Alright, so I've got everything nice and clean with acetone, and I've masked off the parts that I don't want to paint, uh, especially the oiling uh, areas and uh, the bearing stuff. Um, so I've got those all ready to go, I've got the main body ready to go, and then I'm going to be painting it indoors today because um, I live in Illinois, it's a little too cold today to do any painting, it just wouldn't harden properly, so uh, I made this little blower exhaust fan for previous project uh, so I'll be using that again it's just a cardboard box with a air filter and a fan uh, blowing outside so it doesn't get too fumy in here so I'll go ahead and paint these up now this first coat is just gonna be primer obviously. So I'm only gonna do about half of this one since I can't do all of it in the same go so blower going. Set this one in here and kind of dry out a bit. I'll paint this one up. You know, I think I am going to mask this GE symbol. Okay, so I masked off that GE logo just to match the other side. I'm pretty sure it's aluminum anyway, so I think it should be fine. We'll go ahead and paint uh, find this, uh, this side.
right, that one's good. Throw this back here a little ways. Hope it's drying. And we'll spray up this final piece. So everything's all primed here, so I'll just let that all dry up real nice. Uh, then I'll put a coat of paint on it. I'm still trying to decide the color of paint, uh, but I'll figure that out shortly. So I've just been trying to decide which color I want to paint this machine. Uh, my local Menard sells two different kinds of Rust-Oleum that are machine grays that are high-performance enamel. And I like this stuff. It's, it seems like it's pretty hard, and it seems like it lasts a long time. It's pretty durable. So uh, I made a little, got a little piece of steel here, sandblasted it, uh, just the same as the other parts, and primed it and painted it with both kinds, see what it would look like. And uh, I think I'm going to go, probably going to go with the light gray. Um, I'll show you what it looks like against the machine here. So I kind of want to match the original color as much as possible, and it's obviously a little dirty here. And it's certainly somewhere in between these, but uh, I think I tend to like the uh, lighter version more. I think that's more of kind of what this initially looked like. Um, this dark color would just be a little too different, and it looks like there's a bit too much blue in it. Um, I kind of like this nice light gray, though, and it's, it would match the machine I already rebuilt, too. So I'll probably just use that color for everything and uh, kind of make it my shop look nice and um, consistent. All right, so I'll just go ahead and start painting these with their uh, final color. Alright, so I'll use the back can, go buy another can, and then I'll finish up the main housing. Okay, so we got some more paint, and I'll just uh, finish up this last part here, painting now. Okay, so I let that dry for a bit, flip it over, and now I'll just paint the other side. Okay, so everything is painted now. All that's really left to do for this motor is to polish up the hardware. It's kind of old, crusty, and gross. Uh, I want to get the nice and polished up, put a nice little bit of oil on it uh, so it looks nice in the motor. I'll also polish up the set shaft just a bit here. Um, just make that nice and good for reassembly. I'm just going to run everything over this uh, wire wheel and uh, should be pretty short work. <laughs>
So just like that for the rest of them. Okay, so uh, these are all painted up and dried. They've had some time to cure, so I'm just going to pull the mask and tip off and see how they look. Okay, so everything has been cleaned and polished, or uh, primed and painted, so I'm just going to go ahead and reassemble this. I'll put a little bit of oil on the bearings and uh, in the oilers and the felt. Uh, otherwise, I'm just going to pretty much just slap it back together the way it was, so let's see how that goes. This piece, I uh, forgot to sand, sandblast and paint initially, but it's not important to right now anyways. Uh, it's just a little cover for the wiring, so I'll do that one a little later. It's not too big of, big of a deal right now. A little bit of old string in here came loose. Let's see, cut that off. So this doesn't get tangled up in the motor when it's running. There we go. So these turned out real nice. Much better than they were initially. So I was repacking this felt and came out a little bit while I was working on it, but let's get that back in its hole there. That should be good. Okay, let's throw a couple drops of oil on the shaft and inside the bearing here. See if we can't put that back together. Actually, I'm going to be putting a screw on the terminal plate first here. Okay, a bit more oil on this side. Back together. Well, this is a bit tight. I'm a little worried that I got some felt in between the bearing surfaces there. Might have to disassemble this and try again, but. Nah. 
that's not good enough. I'll have to disassemble that and try again. I'll do that off camera though. Okay, so I pulled this back end off of it, and just like I thought, there was a bit a bit of felt sticking down, holding in the holding that uh shaft a bit too tight. So uh I just kind of repacked it in there. It's just a spring with some felt on the end there. And I just kind of repacked it in, put it back on, and it looks like it's pretty good now. It's uh turning much much better than it was. So I'm gonna hook it back to back up to power on my Variac here, and I'm just gonna give it some power, and uh, hopefully it should uh, should be working fine still. So let's see. Yep. So this was a success. Good full voltage here. Yep. Okay, so that's great. I'll go ahead and pull that off the power here. Okay, so I finished the rebuild of this motor for the drill press. Uh, you know, it'll go there at some point, a few weeks from now, hopefully, once I get the new motor mounts and everything, and uh, obviously rebuild the head. Um, but yeah, that should look real nice in that machine, and it seems to function well, so I'm happy with that. Um, one of my next videos will be making the oil caps here. Um, I don't want to just leave those open. Uh, so I ordered some aluminum from a McMaster car and I'll be turning those in the lathe uh, probably tomorrow or the next day or wherever, whenever I get them in, get them in really. So uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, you know, I think the next few videos I'll be working on the head here. Those should probably be a bit more interesting to this, uh, this motor, I think. Uh, just working this old Atlas machinery. So this should be a really interesting rebuild. I won't do all this one in one video. I'll do it in parts. So I'll probably do uh, like the belts, the belt cover is a part, uh, the bracket is a part. I'll just kind of break it up so it's uh, a little more frequent videos. I wanted to do this uh, motor all in one video just because it was such a modular piece. And these things are kind of a pain to rebuild. Um, there's a lot of work to go into these, and you have to be really delicate with the coils. Uh, so it's kind of a little scary to work on these, but. Uh, this one seemed to have turned out real nice, and I'm real happy with it. So, yeah, thanks for watching.